Hello everyone! Welcome to my channel, Brianna Dignard here. And it is finally spring, and well, it's been spring, I guess, for about a couple of weeks now or whatever. Um, but plants are starting to grow in, everything's flowering, my allergies are going crazy, but everything looks so beautiful. And I have recently become kind of addicted to plants. I mean, you can see there's one plant in the background. My entire seal window seal is full of plants and I have a bunch of greenhouses I keep buying from Ikea to fill with more plants. Um, this all started a couple months ago when my husband, like a very, very good husband that he is, was watching one of my videos on YouTube and the video that got suggested next was from a channel called Ants Canada. Um, this channel is much bigger than mine is, but if you haven't heard of it, you should go check it out because we were enthralled by this channel uh this guy built a like a thousand gallon vivarium terrarium and is filled it with plants and insects and other animals and basically just creates these like nature documentary-esque videos about everything going on inside of this like basically rainforest he built inside of his house it is very addicting we got very addicted to it and immediately we wanted our very own terrariums not a thousand gallons big because we don't got that much space, uh, but our own terrarius nonetheless. So I, we went out and created, this one is mine, of course it is, it's got dinosaurs in it. And it's got some nerve plants and ferns in it and it's in this glass jar. And then this one is my husband's with some nice cactuses and a lighthouse because he wanted it to be kind of like beachy themed. So these are two, yeah, these are our two terrarium babies. I thought it would be fun to talk about what terrariums even are if you're unfamiliar, how to make your very own, and how they are wonderful models of the Earth's living ecosystems around us. So let's get to creating little terrarium plant babies, yay! <laughs> Let's talk about what a terrarium is first. A terrarium is basically almost like a mini greenhouse, right? You have a bunch of stuff going on inside of a glass jar and sunlight can come in and warm it up. And if you put water in there, it can evaporate and be recycled back into this jar. The glass and the container it's in is helping to trap moisture and heat, helping to create a better environment for plants to grow in. So as such, you wanna have plants that can deal with having moist soil or humidity or moist soil conditions don't necessarily always need direct access to light um, and are small that will fit into your container. Um, and everything in a terrarium is living in, or hopefully living in perfect balance, just like the Earth's ecosystems also live in perfect balance. There are some people who create closed terra terrariums, which means it's got a lid on it, that they stay closed for years and years and years and don't need any outside influence. They just keep, they basically have their own like little water cycle going on inside of this jar. Um, there are also open terrariums. So like the one I just showed you over there with the lighthouse is full of succulents and cacti that don't like humid soil conditions. So that one is an open terrarium without a top on it um, so that the cacti and succulents don't die. So there's all sorts of different ways to make, uh, yeah, all sorts of different ways to make terrariums that are all super fun. So to do this, you're gonna need some sort of container for your terrarium. This is an old sauerkraut jar from Aldi because recycling. You will also need some uh, lava rock or like, I think it's called Leica or Leica. Um, it's a drainage layer. My pieces are kind of chunky, but this is what I have. So this is what I'm using. Some activated charcoal, which is to help prevent any bacteria from growing in your terrarium that we don't want. So as you can imagine, constant warm, moist conditions, prime activity for bacteria and fungus, which can destroy your little plant. So this helps keep it a little bit cleaner. And then some potting soil. Oh, and of course, obviously our plants. I have some nerve plants here that I've been propagating in water um you want again i mentioned like plants that are okay with human condition hum, humid not human conditions um not necessarily need direct sunlight and honestly these guys we walked into like home depot and they had a little tag on them that said perfect ter ter for terrariums and we went yes <laughs> um so sometimes plants will tell you that and then of course decorations and i have more dinosaurs of course so dinosaurs for our terrarium so the next thing we need to do is all we got to do is start layering it in there. So first we have our drainage layer. This is very important for letting water flow through the terrarium. If you get super waterlogged soil, this occurs, ugh, can I even fit this in here? This occurs with um, like all types of plants is plants don't like their roots to get super waterlogged. They need their roots to absorb 
water, but if they get too much water around them, they're gonna start to rot, and without roots, plants can't really live. Next, we're gonna need some activated charcoal. So this also, in addition to providing, make it a mess, in addition to providing kind of some cleanliness, it also helps to absorb more water at the bottom. And then we can go in with some potting soil. So I'm gonna put a little bit in there and then I'm gonna take my planty boys, make some little divots. People get super into these things with the decorations and like the landscaping of them. Um, there's so many videos and like inspirational terrariums that I hope one day to achieve. Um, but I also have like a lot of hobbies, so I get to them when I can. <laughs> Um, but yeah, people make really awesome terrariums, like water features in them, landscaping features, cooler decorations. This is just a cute, all sorts of containers. This is just a cute little one that I'm gonna make with my recycled algae jar. So then we're gonna put in whoop, more soil to get these guys hopefully covered. Some people do use tweezers also um, in order to put stuff in terrariums, especially if you're using a glass container with a skinny neck. All right, got my plants in there. And next we gotta put our little decoration in there. We got a little stegosaurus boy. And then I'm gonna give it, ooh, aesthetic spritzer. Uh, a couple of spritz of water and Put the lid on her, and this is my terrarium all ready to go. Super easy project. You can fill it with all sorts of plants. You can even fill it with mosses. There are all sorts of good, detailed, like, again, there's all sorts of cool terrarium inspiration out there. So this terrarium is actually a perfect model of what our Earth is like. Our Earth is a giant terrarium, and it's made up of what we call ecosystems. So an ecosystem is all of the living and non-living things in an area and how they interact with each other. So everything in the ecosystem is full and is part of perfect balance. So you have water evaporating from rivers, lakes, streams, oceans, going up to the sky, turning into clouds, raining back down, getting recycled over and over again in the water cycle. You have, especially in the rainforest, dead leaves, dead plants, dead animals, all falling, well, yeah, <laughs> dead leaves and stuff falling off trees, dead animals on the ground that get broken down and decomposed back into the soil to provide nutrients for new life to grow. Everything on this earth is in a super delicate balance, whether or not we're aware of that, including our presence on earth um, is having sometimes a huge impact on the delicate balance of the earth's ecosystems. But this terrarium right here is a little mini rainforest that can remind us of the delicate balance going on all around us. So today we got to make a terrarium um, and learn a little bit, a tiny bit about ecosystem and ecology and all of that good stuff and make our own little mini rainforest. Um, today's fun fact that we're gonna rate on a scale of one to 10 is that the first terrarium was actually accidentally invented by, in 1842 by Dr. Nathaniel Bagshaw Ward. So please be sure to rate that fun fact in the comments below. Make your own terrarium. Um, like this video, subscribe to my channel. I post every Tuesday and Friday and keep it sciencey. So let's go make a bunch of plants. Not we're not making plants. Let's 